Shalom. Today's lesson is dealing with astronomy. So let's start off with getting the definition of astronomy. Astronomy, the scientific study of stars, planets, and other objects in outer space. The study of objects and matter outside the Earth's atmosphere and of their physical end and chemical properties. So that's astronomy. Now let's get the definition of planets. A large round object in space such as the Earth that travels around a star such as the Sun. Now we were told growing up for years in our school systems by scientists that there were nine planets and now there's eight. Wouldn't the moon be considered a planet? We don't even consider the moon a planet. But wouldn't that be considered a planet? But like I said, we were told that there's nine planets and now there's eight. Now Pluto doesn't exist anymore. As each year go by, they are starting, starting to eliminate planets. So now let's get the names of some of these planets. We have Mercury, Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, Venus, and Mars, and Earth, right? But we were told that Pluto doesn't exist anymore. So let's get the definition of these planets. Mercury, that is the messenger of God, God of travelers. Imagine all these planet names derived from Greek and Roman mythology. So, Mercury, let's start over. Mercury, messenger of God or God of travelers. Saturn, God of Saturnus, God of agriculture and harvest. To the Greek gods, they know him as Cronus. I mean, to the Greeks, they know it as Cronus. God of Cronus. Jupiter, chief god, king of gods. Pluto, god of underworld, aka Hades. Neptune, god of the sea. Uranus, Greek deity of the sky, father of Saturn and grandfather of Zeus, aka Jupiter, which in Latin became Uranus. Venus, goddess of love and beauty. Mars, god of war. Now these are all the gods of the Greeks and Romans which came or come from mythology, Greek mythology or Roman mythology. Let's get the definition of mythology. Mythology, the myths of a particular group or culture. Ideas that are believed by many people but that are not true. Let me reread that. The myths of a particular group or culture and ideas that are believed by many people but that but that are not true. So that's the definition of mythology. So as you we know, these names derive from Greek and Roman mythology. These are not true. None of the planets never existed. None of these Greek or Roman planets don't exist. Stick with the scriptures. Let's start off at Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 through 6. Thou shalt have no other Allahayams before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I, Yahweh, thy Allahayim, am a jealous Allahayim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So we're not supposed to honor any of these fake deities that these other nations honor. So now let's go to Matthew chapter 22, verse 20. 9. Yahweh answered and said unto them, 
ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of Allah. So that's what you're doing when you follow these fake deities. You earn from them, from them. So let's go to now. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men. After the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ or the Messiah or Hamashiach. So you got to beware of these things. You can't keep following these man-made traditions and these deities. Okay, so now let's go to Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever, what, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we may through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So everything that we need to know is within these scriptures. We don't have to go outside the scriptures and, and learn about anything. Science is in the scriptures. You know, anything that you need to know, it's in the scriptures. I'm going to read it one more time. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. What many people fail to understand is that we follow sciences, and most scientists are atheists, always trying to discredit the Bible. Always trying to find some kind of flaws with the Bible so they want to come up and play God themselves. So let's look up the word scientist. Scientist, a person who is trained in a science and whose job involves doing scientific research or solving scientific problems. So let's look up science. Science. Knowledge about a study of the natural world based on facts learned through experiments and observation. A particular area of scientific study, such as biology, physics, or chemistry. A particular branch of science. Like I said before, most scientists are atheists. So let's look up the word atheist. A person who believes that God does not exist. So there's many people falling into this new religion called Scientology. I hear all the time, you can't take the scriptures literally. It's a metaphysical book. Well, we shall see. So, let's go to Psalms chapter 33 verse 6. By the word of Yahweh were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. Let's go to John chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. And we're going to jump to verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Allah. So, right now we got is the Word. The Word was in the beginning, and the Word was with Allah. And the Word was Allah. So, whoever this Word was, it was Allah, or part of Allah. Verse 2. The same was in the beginning with Allah. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So as you just as we just read, there's there's two parts of two two supreme beings of Allah. Let's jump to verse 14. And the word was made flesh. Who was this word? The word is the Son. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, as you know, the word of God, the scriptures, is full of grace and truth. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. In the beginning, Allah created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of Allah moved upon the face of the water. So the deep or the darkness is waters. Verse 3. And Allah said, Let there be light, and there was light. So this was the first light ever made. Verse 3 was the first light ever made. And God saw the light, or and Allah saw the light, that it was good. And Allah divided the light from the darkness. Verse 5. 
And Alahan called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Now this is Moses. Moses wrote this down to edify us. So let's see what Ezra had to say. Let's go into the Apocrypha. Second Address, chapter 6, verse 36 through 40. And in the eighth night was my heart vexed within me again. And I began to speak before the Most High. For my spirit was greatly set on fire, and my soul was in distress. And I said, O Yahweh, thou spakest from the beginning of the creation, even the first day, and said it thus, Let heaven and earth be made, and thy word was a perfect work. And then was the spirit and darkness and silence were on every side. The sound of man's voice was not yet formed. Then commandest thou a fair light to come forth of thy treasures, that thy work might appear. So now, let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 6 through 8. And Yahweh said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. So the firmament, firmament is a heaven. So, and God said, or in Alahayim said, let there be a heaven in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Verse 7, and Alahayim made the firmament and divide, divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. So, Alahayim divided the waters, and he put a firmament in the midst of the waters, so he divided the firmament from below, it was waters below the heaven or firmament, and it was waters above the firmament. Verse 8. And Alahayim called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Now, let's go back to the Apocrypha now. Let's go to 2nd Edris, chapter 6, verse 41. Upon the second day thou madest the spirit of the firmament, and commanded it it to part asunder and to make a division betwixt the waters that the one part might go up and the other remain beneath beneath what beneath the firmament or the heavens now let's go back to genesis chapter 1 verse 9 through 13 and alahim said let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear and it was so and Alahayim called the dry land earth. Now, as you see today, we call the whole planet earth. But the scriptures call the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters call the seas. Now, we call them oceans and rivers and seas. But as you see, Alahayim called oceans and all the waters seas. Let me reread the whole thing. Verse 10. And Alahayim called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And Alahayim saw that it was good. And Alahayim said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is it in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seeds after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself, after his kind. And, and Alahayim saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning was the third day. So, let's go back to the prophet. But let's see what uh, Ezra had to say about this. Let's go to 2nd Ezra, chapter 6, verse 42 through 44. Upon the third day, thou didst command that the waters should be gathered in the seven parts of the earth. Six parts hast thou dried up, and kept them, to the intent that of these some being planted of Alahayim, and till might serve thee. For as soon as thy word went forth, the work was made. For immediately there were great and innumerable fruit, and many and diverse pleasures for the taste, and flowers, of unchangeable color and odors of wonderful smell and this was done the third day now let's see what happened on the fourth day let's go back to Genesis chapter 1 verse 
14 through 19. And Alahayim said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Now this is key right here. This is real key. I'm going to reread that and read it slower. And God said, or and Alahayim said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years now like i said that's key verse 15 and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and allah made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also, and Alahayim set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and Alahayim saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now let's go back to the Apocrypha. Let's see what 2nd Edris had to say about this. So let's go to 2nd Edris chapter 6, verse 45 and 46. Upon the fourth day thou commandedest that the sun should shine and the moon give her light. And this was set in the on the fourth day in the firmament. And the stars shall be in order. And gavest them a charge to do service unto men that was to be made. Let's go to Psalm 103 verse 19. Yahweh have prepared his throne in the heavens. And his kingdom ruleth over all. Now let's go to Psalms 110, verse 1. Yahweh said unto my Adonai, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So who's sitting on the right hand of Yahweh? That is the Son, Yahweh Shah. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father, which is Yahweh. So now, let's go to Psalms. 115 verse 16 The heaven, even the heavens, are Yahweh's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. Now as you see, there's more than one heaven. It says, let me reread it. The heaven, even the heavens, that's plural, that means there's more than one heaven, are Yahweh's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. So now, let's go to Psalms 148, verse 4. Praise ye, me praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. As you see, we just read that in Genesis, that there's waters, a body of water above the heavens. Let me read that. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens. Heavens of heavens, that's plural and ye waters that be above the heavens. So like I said, there's a body of water above heaven. Now, let's go over this scripture that tripped me up for a minute. You know, this, this scripture was brought to my attention. Like I said, it tripped me up for a minute. Just remember, no scripture con contradicts itself. So, let's go to John chapter 3, verse 10 through 13. It says, Jesus, or Yahweh answered and said unto him. Now he was talking to Nicodemus. That's who he's talking to. Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Fairly, fairly, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. <clears throat> now the Messiah is on earth talking to Nicodemus. That's what's going on. He's talking to Nicodemus on earth, right? If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? And no man hath descended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So like I said, this was brought to my attention, that how can the Son be in two places at one time? If he's still on earth talking to Nicodemus, I'm going to read verse 13 again. And no man hath descended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So, 
if you don't have no understanding, you think that the Son of Man that's in heaven is dealing with the, the cosmos. So let's get some clarity on the scripture. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 3 and 4. That then Yahweh, thy Allahim, will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither Yahweh, thy Allahim, has gathered thee. So this is during the end time, when the sun comes back, when Yahweh Shah comes back and save his people from their enemies. He's going to bring us that from where we've been scattered into our own land. Now, verse 4 is key. If any of thine be driven out unto the utmost parts of heaven, from thence will Yahweh by Allah gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. So, it says, If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven. Now, this is dealing with the earth or the land. So this this heaven they're talking about is the first heaven. The second heaven is if you go outside, you look in the, in the sky, you see the sun, moon, and stars. That is the second heaven. Guess what? There's a third heaven. So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. I knew a man in Christ, or I knew a man in Messiah, above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, or Allah knoweth, such and one caught up in the third heaven, so such as one caught up in the third heaven, so this telling you there's three heavens, there's not just one heaven, there's three heavens, so let's go back to that scripture, John 3, Chapter 3, verse 13. And no man hath ascended up to heaven. So that's telling you right there that, and no man hath ascended up to the third heaven. But he that came down from the third heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven, in the first heaven. Okay? Let me read that. John, chapter 3, verse 13. And no man hath ascended up to the third heaven. Because it's a body of water you have to get to to get to the third heaven. That is where the Father and the Son dwell right now as we speak. But right here, the Father was dwelling there at this time. So, and no man has ascended up to the third heaven. But he that came down from the third heaven. Even the Son of Man which is in the first heaven. I hope you guys, I hope you was edified. You guys were edified on the scripture. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 39 through 41. All flesh is not the same flesh. There, there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one. And the glory of the terrestrial is another. Now we have earthly bodies. So we have the terrestrial bodies. There is one glory of the sun. And another glory of the moon. And another glory of the stars. For one star differed from another star in glory. So as you, we just read. The stars. All stars differed, differed from one another. Next. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 43, verse 9 and 10. The beauty of heaven, the glory of the stars, an ornament giving light in the highest places of Yahweh. At the commandment of the Holy One, they will stand in their order and never faint in their watches. So who is the Holy One? The Holy One is Yahweh Shah, that's the sun. So let's go to Psalms 147, verse 4. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Let me read that. He telleth, Yahweh telleth the number of the stars. So he know how many stars there is, there is in the cosmos. 
Man can't tell you how many stars are in the cosmos, but the Most High knows how many stars are in the cosmos. He called them all by their names. And as you see, the stars that's in the sky in the cosmos, they have names. The Most High, Yahweh, knows their names. Let's go to the book of Jasher, chapter 9, verse 6 through 8. And we're going to jump to... 12 through 19. And Abram was in Noah's house 39 years. And Abram knew Yahweh from three years old. And he went into the ways of Yahweh unto the day of the, of the death, of his death. As Noah and his son Shem had taught him, and all the sons of the earth in those days greatly transgressed against Yahweh. And they rebelled against him, and they served other gods. And they forgot Yahweh who had created them in the earth. And the inhabitants of the earth made unto themselves at that time every man his god, gods of wood and stone, which could neither speak, hear, nor deliver. And the sons of men served them, and they became their gods. And the king and, and all his servants in Terah, with all his household, were then the first of those that served gods of wood and stone. And Terah had twelve gods of large size made of wood and stone after the twelve months of the year. And he served each one monthly, and every month Terah will bring his meat offering and drink offering to his gods. Thus did Terah all the days. Now Terah, that is Abram's father. Now let's go to uh, jump to verse 9. And all that generation were wicked in the sight of Yahweh, and they thus made every man his god, but they forsook Yahweh who made who had created them. And let's jump to verse 12. And Yahweh gave Abram an understanding heart, and he knew all the works of that generation were vain, and that all their gods were vain and were of no avail. And Abram saw the sun shining upon the earth, and Abram said unto himself, Surely now this sun that shines upon the earth is God, and him will I serve. And Abram served the sun in that day, and he prayed to him. And when evening came, the sun set as usual. And Abram set, said within himself, Surely this cannot be God. And Abram still continued to speak within himself. Who is he who made the heavens and the earth, who created upon the earth? Who, where is he? And night darkened over him, and he lifted up his, his eyes towards the west, north, south, and east. And he saw that the sun had vanished from the earth, and the day became dark. And Abram saw the stars and moon before him, and he said, Surely this is the God who created the whole earth as well as man. And behold, these his servants are gods around him. And Abram served the moon and prayed to it all that night. And in the morning when it was light and the sun shone upon the earth as usual, Abram saw all the things that Yahweh Elohim had made upon earth. And Abram said unto himself, Surely these are not gods that made the earth and all mankind, but these are the servants of God. That's key. But these are the servants of Yahweh. And Abram remained in, in the house of Noah and there knew Yahweh and his ways, and he served Yahweh all the days of his life. And all that all and all that generation forgot Yahweh and served other gods of wood and stone and rebelled of all their days. Now, you're not supposed to serve other gods or other fake deities or fake deities. What you're supposed to do is this. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 through 6. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath the earth under the earth thou shalt not bow down thyselves to them nor serve them for I Yahweh thy Elohim am a jealous Elohim visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me let's go to Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 and 16 who is the image of the invisible Elohim the firstborn of every creature. The sun, Yahweh Shah, is the image of Yahweh. Verse 16. 
For by him were all things created, that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So the Son, Yahawashai, all things were created by him and for him. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 41, verse 17 through 20. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue felleth for thirst, I, Yahweh, will hear them. I, the Allahim of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places, and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water, and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shitta tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree, and, and, and the pine, and the box tree together, that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of Yahweh hath done this, and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. Who's the Holy One of Israel? Yahweh Shah. Okay? So you got Yahweh and Yahweh Shah, which is which makes up Allah. Hayim. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 42. Verse 5. Thus saith Allah, Yahweh, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. So Yahweh done this. Yahweh done all this. He spread forth the earth, spread forth the heavens, and put breath into man mankind and the spirit inside of mankind so now let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 45 verse 11 and 12 thus said Yahweh the Holy One of Israel and his maker ask me of these things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands command ye me I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and all their hosts have I commanded. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 25 and 26. To whom then will ye liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their hopes by number? He calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might. For that he is strong in power, not one fellows. So who done all this? The Most High done all this. Yahweh and Yahweh Shah, they created everything that you see in existence. So we know that the earth and the host meaning the sun, moon, and stars, and the heavens were created in four days, right? So let's get edified on that. Was it really four days? Let's go to 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with Yahweh as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So, if it took if, a, if one day is like a thousand years, you, you know that the earth and the host and the heavens were created in four days, then that means in reality it took Yahweh or Allah Hayyam four thousand years to create the heavens and the earth and the moon, the sun, and stars. Let's go to Psalms chapter 90, verse 4. For a thousand years in thy sight, are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. So a thousand years, nothing to the Most High. That's like yesterday to him. So, let's go to Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 6. Thou, even thou, art Yahweh alone. Thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, 
with all their host, the earth, and all things that are therein, the seas, and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worshipeth thee. Let's go to Psalms 148, verse 1 through 6. Praise ye, Yahweh. Praise ye, Yahweh, from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of Yahweh. For he commanded, and they were created. He hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. So in conclusion, stick with the scriptures. The scriptures does not talk about any other planets. Because they don't exist. The only so-called planets that exist are what we read about the sun, the moon, and what we consider Earth. Also, you know, some people think that this is the end of the world, things is going to happen as far as the Earth is going to be destroyed. This scripture is for you guys. Let's go to Ecclesiastics chapter 1, verse 4. One generation passes away, and another generation cometh. But the earth abided forever. Shalom.